This video will be about how to take an LDAP trace, specifically within eDirectory. And since DSFW is built on eDirectory, it applies to DSFW. And let me just show you from the documentation. There's a picture in here. gives you a high-level overview of DSFW, how it's built. We have our Kerberos, RPC, and SIFS um, accessing the directory. You know, these are all standard protocols for AD. Well, when it hits our directory, we have, uh, it's kind of broken up into three pieces, LDAP and MASS and the, the DSA, Directory S S Service Agent. Uh, you can see how each one is handled with the Active Directory Provisioning Handler. We have our methods. Uh, this is actually the GSS API method, SAMUS PM method for authentication into your directory. And on the LDAP side, it's the Nova Active Directory or the Active Directory Virtualization Layer, also it's known as. So it takes our our different protocols, binds them up here, and sends them to eDirectory e via LDAP. So for DSFW, if we want to see what's happening, these two, uh, a, filter, uh, a trace with LDAP and NMAS will help immensely in troubleshooting an application if it doesn't seem to be working properly with, with DSFW, or just seeing what's going on in general with, uh, with DSFW. And like I said, this applies Taking an LDAP trace also applies to just eDirectory uh, if you have an application that's authenticating to, to uh, eDirectory or you know searching or basically the exact same things as with DSFW. So when you're taking an LDAP trace, two things to be that you're going to need to to consider here. The first is your LDAP screen levels, and then the second is your filters. You want, first, you want to make sure your screen levels are set properly so that you're grabbing the uh, enough information. And there's two ways to do that. You can use iManager or Console One, you know, some utility, uh, or you can use go do, do it via the, the command line. And so you can browse to the object or use the roles commit right here to LDAP, LDAP options, and this will help just get us right to that LDAP server. Uh, for the, the server that we want to troubleshoot. So in this case, it's the DSFW server. So our, we just go to the LDAP server object. And we come in here, and we want to go to the tracing levels. In console one, it's the screen levels. And you can see we have some defaults here, critical, non-critical. And when we take a trace, generally we want to make sure all of these are set. Uh, you can also do it just all but packet dumping. Uh, this might give you know a lot more information that you, that you actually need. Uh, so at a minimum, uh, do all but packet dumping. Which you, again, you can also do packet dumping also. Uh, um, also, so you just come in, check each one, go back to the information tab, and very important, refresh the LDAP server object. So that's one way of doing it. The the next is with the command line. So if we do an LDAP config get and we grep the LDAP screen level. And when you authenticate, it's X500, so it's a dot. So admin.novell in this case, and our password. And we can see our screen level is error and critical. Very easy. So let's uh, now let's. Let's actually set it. So we'll do an LDAP config dash s, and we will do the oops, LDAP screen level. And I just have we happen to have this in the buffer. It's going to show you. We're going to do all but the packet dumping. This is one way of doing it. Equals, uh, and we could do a dash a admin.novell, so it's already there, and we just, oh, you know what, I missed the L. Very important to have your your uh, spelling in there, right? There we go. Screen level, now, as you can see, screen level set to operation, connection, config, everything's set right there. If we come back into iManager, and we do a refresh, you can see everything but packet dumping. That's one way of doing it. Another even easier way, so you don't have to memorize each of these, is instead of doing each piece, just do all. 
So screen level set to all. Let's come back and refresh in iManager and we can see everything is selected. So nice easy way is just to come in and just do LDAP config or using LDAP config just uh, this command right here. Set screen level to all. And you don't have to put the dash A. You can do that. You can put a dash W and have your password. But again, it'll be in the history. It'll do it automatically for you right there. You're not prompted for anything. Uh, you know, security reasons, I wouldn't do the, the dash W, of course. All right, so that's the first part, getting our screen options set. The second part is actually using NDS Trace. So if we come into NDS Trace, we can see right off the bat, screen is on file is off and here are our filters now you might see some scrolling uh, because the screen is on you can do an NDS trace screen off that will turn it off or you can just do NDS trace off and that will turn both the screen and the trace off just in case they're both on I just do NDS trace off and just trace on since I'm usually turning both of them on and off if you want to do just one, you can. You can do an NDS trace screen on, NDS trace file on. It's uh, it's it's up to you. So that's the first piece. We want to make sure that we don't have a lot of scrolling coming through here, so we can actually see what we have in our filter. Second, we want to clear this filter. So let's do a set NDS trace equals no debug. And if we come back in, we can see our filter is now cleared. Now, let's set our filter. So we'll use NDS Trace Plus. If we just do NDS Trace Plus, then we'll allow us to add multiple uh, items in the filter uh, right from the command line here. So I always make sure I want to do time and tags, no matter what type of trace I'm doing, just to timestamps and see what uh, what is it what fil is being filtered on you know, with the tags. So time tags. Uh, for LDAP, of course, we're going to do LDAP. We will always want to do nmass also for authentication. Uh, I also would, would do auth. Those are the basics that you want to have uh, for taking an LDAP trace. Other options, you might want to do uh, resolve. Uh, also the VCLN, virtual client, is another good one. Uh, sometimes you might want to do a, a DSA search, uh, an agent request. These are all, all helpful. Sometimes just debug uh, will will also help uh, give us some information. So I usually start lower <laughs> as far as what I have in the filter, and then add more pieces as I need more information. If I'm not getting what I what I need, that way I'm just not overwhelmed by all the information that's returned. This makes it a little simpler in, in uh, troubleshooting. So we do that. We can see our filter is set. Now let's go and turn on our screen and our file. So if we do an NDS trace, first of all, let's uh, you know, let's exit out. Let's make sure that our uh, log is is uh, empty. So if we var opnovel e directory log, this is where our e directory logs are located. We'll do a long list, and it's the NDS trace log. So we don't have one. We're we're good. If we had one, I would rename it, and then uh, so we're starting off with a, a fresh log. So we go back to NDS trace. Uh, obviously, we go back in. The screen is automatically on. We do an NDS trace on. That turns on the screen and the log. As you can see right there. Now let's do just a basic. Uh, got a. Uh, GSS API bind. We're just searching at the uh, at the the base of of our uh, uh, domain here. And so we did a quick search. If we do an NDS trace off, now we can go in and less the NDS trace log, and we can see what is happening. So we got as you can see here's our our uh, time right here our tags and we want to go through and see so a search request on the base right here 
So if I was to, you know, kind of filter on this, search, uh, search or search request, anyway, do a search. Um, that's, you know, basically finding how, how it's getting started here, uh, w you know, where our search is starting. So search request is usually where I start at. Hit our base. And it's what how is what attribute is it supporting the SASL mechanism, and I mean we come through and we, again. So the VCLN we can you know get some information from that how it's resolving all the way down. Sometimes you might you might not want all that information. Kind of gives us a you know a little maybe a little too much on what we're trying to do right here. Uh, but um, as you can see, just. LDAP, if we filtered on, on LDAP, we could uh, go through and, you know, see just the LDAP request uh, en masse. Uh, we can see our session being created and, uh, you know, authenticating to the directory. So, I mean, it's just gr great utility just to give us an idea of what, what's happening when we do this a simple search like this. So, again, if you're searching, uh, you know, a b binding to the directory, um, you know, in, in some ways, you know, binding, authenticating, um, LDAP trace and mass trace, very helpful in troubleshooting that. So I hope this has been helpful for you in uh, understanding how to uh, set up an LDAP trace. All right, thanks for watching.